you know, Randy Reinholdt is the first Native playwright to sort of be in the main stage season, but there have been other Native artists whose work has been featured at OSF in other avenues and other ways. They just weren't a main stage, you know, season spot. So, you know, want to pay tribute to the Native artists who were here first, right, because if they weren't here doing their work on the green or interacting with other staff here at OSF, no one would consider even thinking of a Native playwright, right? So there are always... You know, when we talk about the firsts, we have to think about everything that came before, right? And 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 I think of, you know, in my family, we have Cherokee storytellers. My uh, my great grandmother, her brother was a very talented poet, and and wrote a lot of poetry. So we have we've always had storytellers and art makers and and in very different forms. And um and you know, our traditional form of storytelling is very performative. Right. It's you know, it's not just well, and then he crossed the street and then he did, you know, it's almost what you would think of as a one person show. It's and and um, and and so there are characters involved who have lines, but it's just one person. It's not necessarily a ton of people up there. And so thinking about it from that perspective, you know, and, and recognizing that that's the practice and the tradition we're building on to get here. It's really exciting to be at this point in time. And I think that um, I've I've. You know, if anyone, if you Google my name and read my blogs, I've had a lot to say about the absence of Native playwrights in the American theater. And as a lawyer, I see the direct connection to the continued harmful legal framework that exists in the United States Supreme Court. Today in the United States, um, our tribal nations cannot exercise criminal jurisdiction over non-Indians who come onto tribal lands and commit crimes. Why is that? Because in 1978, the Supreme Court decided a case called um, Oliphant, where the Supreme Court cited back to an 1823 decision. In 1823, the Supreme Court said tribal nations can't claim legal title to their land because they're racially inferior savages and heathens who don't worship Christ and they don't know how to farm. They're uncivilized, so therefore they can't claim legal title to their land. In 1978, the Supreme Court cites to that case and says, well, if they can't claim legal title to their land, they can't exercise jurisdiction over it. So now we live in a reality where Native women are more likely to be raped, murdered, um, sexually assaulted, domestically abused than any other population in the United States, the majority, a majority of those perpetrators, according to statistics from the Department of Justice, are non-Native. So we know non-Natives are coming onto tribal lands and committing these crimes, and the Supreme Court has said you can't exercise jurisdiction, criminal jurisdiction over them, based on a narrative, a false narrative, constructed in 1823 that Indians are savages and they don't know how to farm and they're not civilized. Where does that narrative come from? Well, it's no coincidence that in the early 1800s, red face was very popular in New York and on the East Coast, and that white people would put on red makeup and take a bottle of whiskey and grunt on stage and be native, and that was how we were portrayed. And when I look at the American theater today, unfortunately, we haven't really changed that performance. It is still, by and large, the American theater is still, if a native body is represented on stage, it's most often in the form of red face and not in the form of an authentic native person today. And so that is something we're moving for. And I see the connection between the legal framework we live in and the narrative that has yet to change. And I think that once more theaters step up to the plate like OSF has, and I have to give a shout out to Perseverance Theater because they're another national non-native theater company producing native playwrights, as well as Kansas City Rep that just produced a play by Larissa Fastors and Arena Stage, um, who's producing one of my plays and Cornerstone. So there are some other theaters out there um, but unfortunately, there's still a small handful. And um, so that makes what OSF is doing rather revolutionary.